Welcome to Get a Clue Casual Gamer, where we get a clue, C-L-U-E, about a game. Or in today's case, about a game designer. Uh, for those who watch me regularly, I'm sorry I have not been on for several weeks. Um, my family is going through a very difficult time right now. And, um, and I just have not had the will or energy to do one of these videos, but I also have gotten to the point where I realized that these videos and talking about games gives me joy and I need a little bit of joy in my life right now. So I decided I've been holding off on doing uh, this video in particular about my favorite um, game designer. Um, he is, uh, <laughs> it was a, several months ago when I realized that I tend to be drawn to this designer's games. And in the title, of course, I will have put his name, which is Phil Walker Harding. Uh, Phil Walker Harding is a young man from Australia, uh, and he has designed quite a few games. I personally own, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 games, and I have another eight on my wish list. Um, out of the 14 games that I own, I have played eight of them. And so I'm going to rank, uh, well, not really rank, but I wanna to talk to you and share with you what I know about the games that I've played and the games that I own and have not played yet. Usually it's trying to find the right people to play them with. Um, and then a little bit about the ones that are on my wish list and why. So we're gonna start with the ones that I have played. Now, the ones that I have played are all, well, let's just say, I think there's only one or two, let's see, I'm looking, looking, looking. Now, they're all, all, including the, my, my wish list, they're all considered casual level games, which is one of the things I really like about this designer. Phil Walker Harding, for the most part, um, I have not come across one of his games that is outside the casual level. Now, pay no attention to this. This is not one of his games and this is not a casual level game. That just happens to be in my collection. So yeah, some of these are. Anyway, um, so let's start with um, breaking down uh, the eight that I've played and love, okay? Um, Oh, I always when I start talking, my nose starts to tingle. Um, I'm gonna start off at, oh, I'm using, I've moved over to another part of my game room, and so I'm using my TV tray, my large thing, which jiggles a little bit, so I'm sorry if it jiggles a little bit. Um, hopefully, I won't be hitting it much, but I'm lifting off these three games from the tray itself, so it kind of jiggled a little bit. These three are roll and right or flip and right. I'm looking, actually, they're all flipping rights. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> These are three flipping rights done by um, Bill Walker Harding. The smallest one here is called Silver and Gold. I actually, um, technically, it's not a, a solo player game, but I played it solo <laughs> yesterday. Um, I kind of created one little rule uh, to make it a little bit harder for me to uh, get points, score points. <clears throat> but with that one little change, I was able to just play it for fun. So Silver and Gold, it, the concept is that you will have a couple um, islands in front of you. And some of the islands will have palm trees, some will have um, gold coins, and some will have X marks the spot. And each of those will give you uh, something different, either points or a chance to X out another spot. Um, they kind of look like this. I'm not opening up all these games, but that's what the cards look like. And then there's um, cards that will be flipped over that show a polyomino shape or a Tetris shape 
and you X out that shape on one of your cards. When you complete a card, um, you've checked out the entire island for pirate treasure, um, you put it aside, it's worth points, and you get to pick another card and continue playing until um, you've done four rounds. It's a very uh, family-friendly, very easy game uh, to play and to get to the table, and that's why I really love silver and gold. Another fun, easy game, great for uh, family get-togethers, and can be played solo, is Super Mega Lucky Box. Super Mega Lucky Box is what I kind of call a cross between bingo and tic-tac-toe. I've done videos on both of these. In fact, I think you know, most of his, I do videos once I, I've played them just so that you get to know them. But this is another Phil Walker Harding. Where does it say it? Some places says it, but it is one of his. Um, and basically you're gonna have several of these little cards and a number will be flipped over and you X out the number and if you get a row or a column most of them will give you an extra little uh, thing that you can do and so you're trying to cascade these uh, this opportunity of Xing out more and more or receiving uh, lightning bolts or crescent moons because they're wor they have abilities or are worth points and um, so yes, Super Mega Lucky Box, great, very, very easy to play for people who have never played a non-mass market game. Absolutely so simple, cross between bingo and tic-tac-toe, and we know how to play those pretty well. And then the last one is a little bit more um, thing thinky um but it's not it, you have there's a strategy to it there's you, you get the opportunity of um xing out paths and you're trying to get keys to unlock temples so you can get the key and then go to a temple and unlock the temple and you get points um you're also trying to get gems and um food uh basically you're exploring this land um it, it's a, a flip and right again and you're xing out and you're you get trying to get food you're trying to get to the different villages you're trying to get gems and um you're trying to get to the dim to the temples let me find a temple um mm, that looks like a temple there's a temple um if you x out a horse that gives you a free X out someplace else, um, anywhere. Uh, so anyway, basically, it's it's a wonderful little thing. I played it a couple times this past week because it's one of those games that once you know how to play it, you you don't have to think twice about it. None. Of, in fact, these three rolling rights that I've talked about, um, I don't have to look up the uh, directions, the rules, which is why I tend to play them a lot because they're comfort food. <laughs> they're just a comfort game. And um, I, in fact, just about all of his games in some way are a comfort game. Okay, so if we go from those three rolling rights to let's get some sushi. This is going to take me a couple things to pick it all up because a couple of them are heavy. Okay, the first one that came out is Sushi Go. Sushi Go um, <laughs> is basically a card drafting set collection ga card game. That's what it is. You collect sets and card drafting. Um, it's a wonderful way of learning about card drafting, which is basically you start off, everyone starts off with a certain number of cards in their hands, they pick one and they pass the rest unseen to their neighbor. And then once everyone has picked their one and passed the rest, everyone shows what they got. And you're and then you get the cards from your neighbor your other neighbor and you pick one and you do this until all the cards have been put out. And then you score um, what kind of groups, sets you have created, and then that's all taken up and you do it again and you do several rounds of that that is sushi go very easy one little side 
note is that um, yesterday I was in a five below and they had sushi go in a box, not in a can like normal, um, for $3.25. $3.25 for sushi go. Um, yeah, I bought a few that I'll use for gifts and prizes and stuff. So we'll see. <laughs> but that's how much I love sushi go. But of course, they decided, you know what? Sushi Go is good for two, two to five players, I believe. Yeah, two to five players. But what if you have more players or what if you're tired of using the same uh, type of sushi every time you play? So they came out with Sushi Go Party, which is has enough cards in it for two to eight players. But you can, you, you can change out what sushi you're going to use in different games so that it's not as predictable so it adds just a touch over it makes it available for a larger group but also it makes it a little bit more changeable so that you're not trying the same sets over and over and over again and get too casual and too well known with it so that it plays a, basically the same as sushi go but it's for a party <laughs> now then of course not to be outdone is Sushi Roll, which is a similar premise as Sushi Go. You're creating sets, but you're using dice to do it. Let me put it right side up that way. Um, each player has a board and you're trying to create um, sets and in your, um, on your player board. And the dice, get rotated around instead of cards you have dice you pick one dice and you pass the the rest over that but unlike oops sorry unlike with the cards where you, you know the cards are static it's like this is what the cards are when you pass the dice the next person will take them and roll them again so you don't exactly know what it is you're giving them and you don't quite know what you're getting until you roll and then you choose and then the rest of the dice go to the next person. And that's basically Sushi Roll. Now I will say out of um, the Roll and Rights, my favorite to play with non-gamers would be Super Mega Lucky Box. The game name is silly enough that it gets their attention and the cover reminds them of 70s bubble letters and so that kind of makes it a very friendly looking game and once they start playing it it's a very friendly game um, when it comes to the sushi games sushi roll is okay um, I enjoy it but I prefer uh, sushi go sushi go sushi go party I prefer them because the cards stay the same opposed to the randomness of the dice. I tend to, I can deal with randomness and that's okay. I am not an all only Euro type of game gamer, um, but I do enjoy knowing, and especially if it's only two or three players, you know what you just passed, some of it's coming back to you. So it's kind of like, okay, you know, what, Am I, you know, going to be getting back and what can I plan ahead? So those are those. And then my last three games um, of the ones that I have played. So technically it's nine games. Three Roll and Rights, three Sushis. And then we have, I think the first one I ever played of Phil Walker Harding's was at a friend's house. She had this game and as soon as I played it, it was like, oh, I need to buy that game. And it's Archaeology, the New Expedition. Archaeology New Expedition is a card game. And um, you really, it's, you're playing, you're trying to avoid thieves and sandstorms, if I remember correctly. You're trying to create sets and sell these sets of artifacts. As an explorer, you're an archaeologist, you collect these sets of artifacts and you sell them to the museum. And that's how you get your points, is selling these sets to the museum. The bigger the set, the more you make when you sell it. But if a sandstorm hits, you might lose half of what, or all of what you have. Or I think a thief, you lose half of what you have, or vice versa, one or the other. But, um, yeah, so it's 
kind of like pushing your luck. Am I going to wait another hand to see if I can get more of something so I can make more money or more points? Um, so yes, so archaeology, the new expedition, love this card game. It's not complicated, but it's risky. And so it's one of my favorites. Um, now, Phil Walker Harding has done several of the adventure games. This is Monochrome Inc. I have spoken about this <laughs> before, and I will tell you that I am horrible at um, the escape room, the games, the adventure games, uh, the, the mystery type games. I, I really, I, I started this game and after a couple hours and still being on the first floor and trying to figure out how I could get a key to the elevator to get up, further up to get to the secret lab <laughs> so I could find out secrets in the secret, in the secret lab, um, this, I, I, I finally just said, uh, okay, I cannot play this game any longer. Um, I am frustrated. I obviously am missing something. And so it's waiting for when I have other people, smarter people, um, to play this with because I am missing something. I am not seeing something that apparently should be obvious or at least even hidden obvious um obviously hidden <laughs> or something i am missing it but if you like the escape room type games these adventure games are very well planned very well thought out um and for me i think it's probably one of the most complicated things that phil walker harding has ever created because it's just me <laughs> it's yeah it's just me i just i yeah it was so frustrating. Two hours and I was still on the same floor. I looked at everything that I thought I could possibly find on that first floor and I still could not figure out how to get off of that first floor. So that's waiting for me to be in a group of others who will uh, help me figure it out. And then the last one I own that I have played is Summer Camp. Summer Camp was a Target or no, a Walmart exclusive. And I have seen it in my local Walmart. They have two that are on the top shelf sideways, so you can't even see what it's about. And I'm so frustrated with them keeping it up there because it is a cool game. It's a it's a casual level game, but it helps you learn um about uh, the, uh, not hand management, hand management, but also um, deck building in a very basic way. Just like um, Sushi Go teaches how to do card drafting, which is used in so many games in the gaming world, um, Summer Camp teaches uh, deck building in a very painless and very, um, recognizable setup. Your your campers trying to it, it, it's a use cards to move ahead on a track. Yeah, and we're we grew up playing games where you move ahead on a track. You you play Sorry, Trouble, Parcheesi, Monopoly. All of those games you roll dice or something to move ahead on a track. Well, summer camp you're using the cards in your hand to move ahead on the track. But you get you can buy better cards so that you can do better moves as the game goes on. And that's what deck building is all about. But in a very casual, I keep on using that word because that's the name of this channel, a very basic, recognizable way. So this is, I, I love this game. Uh, you win badges, you get money to spend at the canteen or whatever they call it, uh, the camps I went to and worked at, we call it the canteen. Um, but yes, you're trying to get the most badges, the quickest, get at the end of the, um, get the end of each bridge, you get a badge. If, and if you're the first one to get to that spot, you get the badge with the most points. If you're second, you get the badge with the next most points. And if you're last, you get the one with the least points. Or if there's enough people playing, you might not even get any points. I don't, it's like, I haven't played with max players. I've only played, I think, with either two or three 
at two or three and I've, it plays to four. Um, but anyway, it's a wonderful game. It's a big box. Um, check out your Walmart and it might you might be able to get it in other places now because it's been over a year uh, since it came out. Um, but you know, check that that top shelf. You know, it's it's so annoying that they have mine has it at the top shelf of the uh, game section. Anyway, so those are the ones that I have played. Um, I'd say my, well, the most frustrating would be adventure games. I can't say that I don't like it. I like it. I just am lousy at it. Um, and I think Sushi Roll is probably my least needed, um, just because I prefer the way Sushi Go and Sushi Go Party play, which is, hand, you know, cards in hand rather than a roll of the dice. Mm. So anyway, those are them. Now, I own six more games that I have not played yet um, for different reasons. And so I'm going to point them out and tell you a little bit about them. First one is this one right here, Gingerbread House. Gingerbread House is one of the more um, thinky <laughs> games uh, out of Phil Walker Harding games. Um, it's still below a two in Board Game Geek uh, rating, uh, you know, complexity rating. Um, but it uses uh, polyomino shaped pieces, or Tetris shaped pieces, and you're building this house. The premise is that, um, like I've said many times before, this is not a Christmas game. I don't care if people put it on their Christmas list. It is not a Christmas game. It's more of a Halloween game because it's the story of Hansel and Gretel, the witch of Hansel and Gretel. She's got this house built of sweets and people are coming and breaking off pieces and eating it. And so the, you are in the game, all the players are witches trying to uh, capture the people or creatures that are eating her house and that and that's the premise of the game and so yeah so that's gingerbread house next one over here is um imhotep the duel um it's a two-player game and i need to find somebody just the right person to play it with it's um again not the most complicated game, but, and I love the Egyptian theme and, and it, it builds on the concept of the original game Imhotep, but this is Imhotep, the duel, two player version. And this is, um, yeah, I'm just waiting for the right person who wants to place a little bit, uh, planning type thing you're buying and selling or build, putting things onto a boat um, cargo onto a boat before your um, opponent takes it or something like that uh, yeah <laughs> so anyway uh, that's Imhotep the Duel up here is Gizmos Gizmos is probably the most complicated of the ones that I own um Basically, you're creating or collecting gizmos, things, nonsense things. In fact, I was watching somebody talk at uh, one of their lists just yesterday or the day before um, because, you know, even if I am on the, uh, the depressed side, um, watching game videos of other people is... A happy moment for me so and they were talking about gizmos and they were saying that they were talking about um, the concept of creating and or collecting these things they weren't real but they're, they're gizmos they're items <laughs> so I'm here like yeah I, I again being I mean when I say it's the most complicated of the ones that I own it's a 2.01 and for those who have not watched any of my videos, ranking and BGG, Board Game Geek ranking is from one to five, one to five. Um, and this is a two. So it's really not complicated. I consider casual level up to 2.5. 
from 1 to 2.5 and it's a 2.01 so it's not that complicated okay so after those three comes museum suspects now I have not played museum suspects I am really wanting to play it but it's I believe the newest one I have and so I just have not had the opportunity to do it I use some of my Christmas gift money to buy that one so it really is a very recent purchase and I have not had the chance but I love it I've done a video on it I love the anthropomorphic <laughs> I could not remember that word when I was doing the video anthropomorphic creatures the little animals who act like humans yeah um, in museum suspects it's not a, it's not a difficult game at all it's um, basically you're just trying to figure out who stole you know it's kind of like I, I hate to malign things but like clue where you in clue you're trying to find out who killed with what in what room well museum suspects you're just trying to figure out who was it who stole whatever artifact that was stolen so that is museum suspects this nice little box right here then I move over here and this is or snakes that's it snakes which is basically um I'm pretty sure it's a party style game. Uh, I don't know too much about it. I saw it and I knew it was Phil Walker Hardy and I really wasn't loving the cover. Um, so I passed it by and passed it by and passed it by until one day it was on clearance. And so I really don't know a lot about it. I just know that it is a Phil Walker Harding and I have heard people and I thought positively of the reviews that they've given um, when they talk about it so I was like at clearance price I got it and I have not played it yet but I it, it's more of a party level game for a lot of people so I have to be in the right setting for that and then last of the ones that I own is planted and planted was um, a target exclusive game when it came out and um, came out this past year. Um, yeah, actually, Museum Suspects I, is either a 2022 or a 2023 game. It's very new. Planted came out in 2022. I'm thinking Gizmos did too. Hmm. I, I didn't check for that. Anyway, um, but Planted, it, it's you're ra uh, raising plants and Get, collecting plants and trying to make the most points with your plant um, collection and um, so it's not a hard game either uh, it's pretty actually it's on the lower lo lower half of um, the complexity in fact uh, board game geek has planted at the same level as museum suspects oh my dog is begging over here I see her in the corner out of the corner of my eye almost she's literally uh, she's part dachshund and terrier and she gets up on her hind legs and begs with her paws you can wait okay you can wait almost so all I have left now are the ones that are on my wish list and so I'm just gonna really quick go over them and if you not if you're not interested you can skip out now um, but don't forget to like subscribe all that stuff I never say that but you know I remember it now okay so I think on the top of my wish list I have four that are on the top of my wish list and then four that are I would really like this if I could get it at a really good price okay so my the top of my uh, wish list is my shelfie which has not quite come out yet um, it's going to be a 2023 game and it's like any day now it's coming out like any day now and so I am really looking forward to my shelfie which is basically you're collecting things and placing them in a frame very similar to connect four you know the plastic and you slide things down but you're collecting um, books or tchotchkes not knickknacks you know um, so that's I'm mean, here that's my kind of thing I love pattern building you know and yeah so anyway so my shelfie uh, one that came out either very late in 2022 or very early in 2023 um, or maybe it's not out yet I 
think it might have come out this month, but it might not be out yet. And it's monolith. Uh, monolith is, um, you're going to have these um, <laughs> three-dimensional type of Tetris shapes. And you're going to have a card that has, um, this is what you want to see from above. Uh, you know, this block green, this one yellow, this one, yeah. And so you're trying to create with your blocks, uh, your shapes, something that will end up looking from above that pattern. It matches the card. If you did it, you got those points, and then you get another card, and you do some more. And that's all I really know about Monolith. Uh, then another one is Llama Land. And actually, I want to talk about Llama Land and Baron Park together. Um, both of them have very similar um, play uh, component type wise, reminds me very much of Gingerbread House, the way you play Gingerbread House. Um, I think Llama Land is a little bit more complicated than Baron Park. Llama Land is about llamas, and Baron Park is about um, bears. <laughs> so it's kind of like Gingerbread House, llamas, bears. Uh, both Llama Land and Baron Park have great reviews. Um, check them out yourself. I, but the, these are the four that are at the top of my wish list when it comes to Phil Walker Harding games. And then the other four, which are um, ones that have piqued my interest, one is basically almost impossible to find, which is Cacao. Um, you know, chocolate, <laughs> cacao. Uh, I could not find it at, at um, Board Game Geek or Miniature Market. Or not Board Game Geek, um, Game Nerds. Game Nerds and Miniature Market at the time I checked did not have it. Someone was selling one on Amazon for $62 and I'm here like, that's not happening. Uh, for me, that just, uh-uh. Um, but another, the other three are Imhotep, which is the original that this is based off of, but it's for more than two players. It's Imhotep, again, Egyptian setting. Um, so you have Imhotep, you have Cacao, then we have Cloud City. I saw some people playing Cloud City on one of the dine, uh, Dice Tower, either Cruise or um, West. Dice Tower, no, Dice Tower West is coming up. So it was something. They were playing it, and they were actually playing Cloud City. I went, oh, I recognize that. It's basically three-dimensional. You're literally um, building buildings and then connecting them, um, you know, because the city is in the clouds, you know. It's like, so you're building up. Um, and then the last one in my uh, wish list came out this past year, 2022, and it's called Fjords. And I cannot remember much about it except that when I see a, a review about it or I see an intro to it, I'm here like, oh, that looks interesting. That looks like fun. And it's a Phil Walker Harding game. So that's, that speaks highly of the game. I love Phil Walker Harding games. Phil Walker Harding, the good Australian uh, game designer. And these are all the games that I feel love for. All, oof, let's see, um, what, how many was it? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. 22 of Bill Walker Harding games. Until next time, happy gaming, and God bless you and your family. Bye.